Hey guys, it's me, Ronald, just Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather here on this morning update. My uh, bullet points, uh, we've got this panhandle storm system moving through Colorado, New Mexico, and then that becomes a northeast type of snowstorm. There are actually three different storm systems lined up for the northeast with some big grand totals over the next eight to nine days. I'll look at that coming up. Now out west, after this panhandle storm, the pattern's going to shift. Um, dramatically, and the jet's going to move up to the north and become more of a northwest flow orientation. Um, so that's going to favor some new places for um, snow. I want to show you what it looks like. It's snowing in Colorado. There's the uh, the view of Aspen snow mass this morning. That's Aspen Highlands. Um, I'm expecting probably uh, six inches of uh, grand total snow out of this thing. It's a southern track storm. It tends to favor southern Colorado and then kind of wrap around through the sand grays and the front range high peaks. So um, not the biggest storm for the interior uh, ski resorts of Colorado, but uh, definitely enough to refresh things. But um, I believe Aspen Highlands, I did a uh, um, sort of an analysis yesterday. I think they're about 220, 225 for the season, which is... Um, I'm told way above their, their norm for this time of the year. Um, let me show you the uh, water vapor. So the oranges and reds are drier air aloft. Let me mark where we have the big, here's the panhill storm right here. It will make its move and then become a northeast storm with some snow. Um, second low right here and then another low here. But you can see what's happening to the flow. Um, there is no atmospheric river at this point. What we're dealing with is a totally different flow, and there's some ridging happening, bending of the jet, and then, of course, you've got your panhandle storm. But there's also some southern contribution coming in as well. But this, there's an area of high pressure that will start to build, and this is going to go into this direction and become a high-pressure ridge off the west and northwest, Pacific Northwest coast. And so the jet will eventually look like this down the road. Uh, northwest flow so all the moisture will then flow into these areas instead of California for several days um, so um, I want to show you the jet um, so this is the jet full on 127 you can see it you can see the area of high pressure sitting over California off the west coast everything's sort of bending up to the north with that amplified jet now there's going to be a, a little period of drier air for the west because of this before the pattern reestablishes itself and they, you get some new um, lower atmospheric pressure readings by the end of the month into February February looks to be active for the west I think will establish more of a storm track coming out of the Pacific Northwest Montana Idaho Wyoming Colorado Utah during that time frame but right here this represents um, some higher pressures so we could be looking at a slightly drier period right there all right let's look at the um, let's go back here I want to show you the future of the forecast radar and satellite so this is Thursday morning at 6 here comes another ripple of low pressure diving down the jet during the transition period. Um, here's Saturday morning at 6. You can see another little ripple. This one's diving definitely more of a northwest flow um, into Monday morning there. There's Monday uh, late. And everything's at this point is up in the northern tier uh, with that new pattern. Look how dry California is, Nevada, southern Utah, Arizona. At this point, again, you're dealing with that higher pressure, uh, the bending of the jet to the north, and the storm track primarily at this point favoring the Pacific Northwest and northern tier. All right, let's go into some of the uh, the forecast numbers here. So this is all of today through the 20th. Um, so you've got the Panhandle storm dropping another potentially three to six inches in Colorado and northern New Mexico, and then it's out of here. Um, in California, you've got probably one more ripple of low pressure to come through another five to nine. Um, some light amounts through Wyoming and Utah, and probably 6 to 12 up there in the Pacific Northwest. So again, that's period one. Um, here's period two, the 21st through the 27th. You can clearly see, there. I don't have anything for California at this point. Arizona, southern Utah, Nevada, all dry with that northwest-oriented uh, jet stream. So you've got some pretty good snow uh, wrapping down the way Jackson Hole didn't show up. That's about a foot. It should be a foot there in Jackson Hole for that period, along with Grand Targhee. Big Sky, that cluster right there should do really well with this northwest flow. Um, probably 10 to 12 up there, Baker to Stevens. In Colorado, the central and northern mountains will do well as a result of this um, the north-south jet stream. And also snow for uh, most of northwest Montana. All right, let's talk about... Um, the northeast. This is going to be a big period. If this plays out, we're looking at three different storm systems. 
Um, and the second and third storm systems would be the bigger ones. The first one would be lighter, and then the bigger ones later in the period. So, I mean, we're looking at one to four feet, uh, excuse me, one, yeah, one to four feet, one to four feet to Mount Washington, Sunday River, some big totals there, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, uh, Mad River, Sugar Bush, all 40 plus right there. So, uh, again, all the stars have to align for this to happen, but the potential's there for big snow in three different storm systems. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Have a great day.